It's decision day in America, and it all comes down to this. As the country decides, our 45th president. It's just your right to, to be here and, and to speak out. Long lines all across the Ozarks. A live report on voter turnout with two hours left to cast a ballot in Missouri and until 730 in Arkansas. And live reports from candidate headquarters. The governor and Senate races in Missouri expected to be closely contested tonight. And we're off. We begin on this election night with those hotly contested races in Missouri that are really being watched across the country. Absolutely. We have live team coverage for you tonight across the state. Crews in watch parties in St. Louis, Kansas City, and of course here in Springfield. We begin tonight with the battle for a Missouri seat in the United States Senate between Republican incumbent Senator Roy Blunt and Democratic challenger Jason Kander. Okay, weather Sarah Forhats is at Senator Blunt's watch party right now monitoring this very close race though, along with the rest of the nation. Sarah. Hey, Ethan and Emily, uh, this is where the returns will come in. Senator Roy Blunt, not here yet, but he will be taking stage later tonight. As you mentioned, polls close at 7 o'clock, and we'll be watching with the people here as those results come in. Of course, this is really a nationally watched race right now. The Senate up for grabs. Democrats need five seats to take control of the Senate. It is really close, a state-by-state -state race right now that people are watching. The people in southwest Missouri, very much known to Senator Roy Blunt, elected to the Senate in 2020. 10, but he has overwhelmingly won the House seven times leading up to tonight. His opponent, Jason Kander, also becoming very well known. He had one of the most uh, arguably watched ads of this election season uh, anywhere in the country. And the race tonight, closer than anyone thought it would be, really a one point goes to Blunt right now if you average all the polls. Real clear politics uh, gives him a one-point edge. But in a state that is historically red, at least in recent history, it is leaning potentially blue tonight, so it would be very close. Kander has really billed this kind of as the ultimate insider of Roy Blunt versus the outsider, Jason Kander. Uh, Jason Kanner, of course, right now, Secretary of State for Missouri, has been since 2012. And prior to this, he did serve two terms in the Missouri State House and then uh, also has extensive military leadership, something we've seen a lot of. Uh, Blunt focused really more on aligning Kander with President Obama and then also Hillary Clinton. So we will see a hotly uh, contested race tonight. And as the returns come in, we will check back in, guys. All right, Sarah Foreheads for us tonight. And of course, on the other side of the Ticket Poll Show, current Secretary of State Jason Cantor has gained ground on Blunt with millions of ad dollars pouring in in the last couple of weeks, including from the National Democratic Party. And Katie Brissell for us tonight tracking the Cantor campaign. Katie. Right, Emily, we are here in Jason Kander's hometown of Kansas City, where we will watch those numbers start rolling in a little later this evening. Now, as Emily mentioned, Missouri is a key state in determining which party will control the United States Senate. Missouri is one of three GOP-friendly states, along with North Carolina and Indiana, that have emerged as top battlegrounds as Democrats fight to gain a Senate majority. And Jason Kander has proven to be a contender against incumbent Missouri. Missouri Senator Roy Blunt. Now, Missouri is also reportedly the state with the best chance of seeing one party win the Senate race and another win the presidential race. Although Trump is expected to win in Missouri, Democrat Kander has made the Senate race here in the Show Me State quite competitive. Now, just a little bit about Jason Kander. We do know that he is the Missouri Secretary of State. He was a captain in the Army National Guard, and he's been calling himself an Army veteran outsider throughout this campaign. Now, at only 35 years old, he was what some have considered an underdog, especially con con compared to longtime politician Roy Blunt, but he's since proven to be a very tough opponent in this race for the United States Senate seat. Now, of course, we will be here throughout the night bringing those numbers to you live from Kansas City, so make sure you stick with KY3 for the latest coverage. Live from Kansas City, Katie Brousseau, KY3 News. Now to the race for Missouri governor and a close contest between Democrat Chris Coster and Republican outsider Eric Greitens. We continue our team coverage tonight in Chesterfield, Missouri, where KY3's Mike Landis is with the Greitens campaign. And of course, they are waiting for the crowd and the candidates who arrive here. Expected a little later this evening after those polls, uh, polls finally close. As you can see, they are set up ready for uh, a very hopeful crowd tonight. Definitely a very long day for all the candidates. Eric Greitens, take a look here, voting earlier today, wrapping up some of those last minute uh, campaigning activities throughout the day today. And the polls still showing a very close tie uh, between 
Coster and Greitens. So, of course, uh, Greitens' party says they are very hopeful that things will go in their way tonight, but, of course, we'll have to wait and see how that actually turns out tonight. Now, we can tell you Greitens and his family is expected here to uh, arrive at the Doubletree Hotel in Chesterfield about 6.45 tonight, and we will speak with the candidate then about his feelings about how things are going tonight. Live in Chesterfield, Michael Andis, KY3 News. And running neck and neck with Greitens is Democrat Chris Coster. Missouri's current Attorney General. And KY3's Paula Morehouse is following his campaign tonight in St. Louis. This could be a long night in what has turned out to be a real horse race between Chris Coster and Eric Greitens. Right after the primary, Coster had a very comfortable lead, but Greitens has been chipping away at it throughout these months and coming into election day they are in a tie now Greitens has campaigned as we know as the outsider but Coster has not been running away from his 22 years in public service as a matter of fact one of his campaign themes has been he will be ready for office on the first day now he has also received a number of endorsements that typically go to Republicans including the Missouri Farm Bureau the Missouri Soybean Association and the huge one the National Rifle Association and there there are a number of differences, so many differences between these two candidates, but one of the big, big issues is right to work. Chris Coster says if that legislation hits his desk, he will veto it as his predecessor, veto it as his predecessor did. But if Eric Greitens gets in, he says he will help push it through. So that would make a significant difference here in Missouri, whether it will be a right-to-work state or not a right-to-work state. But it could be a very long night before we know who is sitting in the governor's seat by tomorrow. Reporting live in St. Louis, Paula Morehouse, KY3 News. And it's been an incredible day for voter turnout. We are talking what could be historic levels here locally, looking at the possibility of 65 to 70 percent or greater in Greene County. And that means long lines for a lot of us at the polls. K. Arthur's Linda Russell is live tonight with how things are looking right now as people get off work. Linda. Well, here at Macedonia Baptist Church on West Sunshine, they say this is about the longest the line has been all day. This is the end of the line right here. It winds all the way down this hallway to the other end of the building, back again, and the vote Voting location is actually in this direction, so very long line. Folks in about this spot are telling me they've been in line for about 30 minutes here. And Greene County officials say as of about 30 minutes ago, 48% of registered voters in Greene County had cast their ballots, that number quickly growing. This election day began with some very long lines. I arrived about 7.30 and realized the line was around the building. Uh, it doesn't surprise me because I think we've got a pretty divided country right now. I came this morning and it was pretty crazy. It was going out to the parking lot, so I came back. A hiccup with an iPad to check voters in at the Southside Senior Center slowed the line this morning, but most across Greene County say things went smoothly at the poll. Everyone in line was very friendly and um, patient, and I was in and out in 45 minutes. While voters are making their voices heard, others were voicing their opinion in more creative ways across from one Greene County polling place. We're, we're doing this in a peaceful, fun manner. Anybody can stop by. We've had people from both uh, sides stop by and laugh, give us their opinions. It's all about a good time. Most voters are pleased to see the campaign season coming to an end. Absolutely. I'm so tired of hearing the campaign stuff on um, on the Internet and on TV. As they anxiously await the election results. Well, hopefully it's good for everybody. I really hope it is. My allegiance is ultimately with heaven, so um, whatever happens, you know, I think we'll be okay. And the line is still growing here at Macedonia Baptist Church. The end of the line right here winding far, far around the building inside, thankfully. Um, folks in this spot are telling me they've been in line for about 35 minutes and voting is just around the corner here. So uh, just be patient. But if you're in line by 7 p.m. tonight, you'll get to cast your ballot here in Missouri. Live in Springfield, Linda Russell, KY3 News. Wow. And 7.30 down in Arkansas. That is something we never see. Lines like that for an election. But uh, good to see the public getting out to vote, right? No secret, the divisive presidential race is what's driving record turnout at the polling places like that one all across the country. Polls show people are more inclined, though, to vote against one candidate rather than for the other. Already today, a Nevada judge has ruled against Donald Trump, who filed suit alleging poll workers at four polling places in a primarily Hispanic neighborhood in Las Vegas allowed voters to cast ballots after the polls had closed Friday night. Trump wanted those votes thrown out. A judge said no. So now the candidates cast their ballots, and we wait for the numbers to come in. 
Hillary Clinton voted for herself today in New York. So many people are counting on the outcome of this election, what it means for our country. Also in New York, Donald Trump cast his ballot. A tough campaign, but now relief. I just can't stop crying. It's a very emotional day. There's strong turnout in battleground states. North Carolina, Ohio, Nevada, Florida, and Pennsylvania. But I was glad to see that the lines were long. It meant that people are out and voting. Trump running mate Mike Pence looked ahead. I'm very confident uh, that a president, Donald Trump, uh, will have the partners that we need uh, to rebuild our military, revive our economy. Clinton running mate Tim Kaine talked bipartisanship. We have to show that we want to govern for all, not just those who voted for us. It has been an unprecedented and unique campaign. A TV star and billionaire developer. We are going to win back the White House. Versus a woman involved in politics for the last 40 years. There will be no question about the outcome of this election. And it all comes down to this. This is interesting and somewhat astonishing in a country this size. The two presidential candidates will hold watch parties just about 20 blocks from each other in New York City. The question tonight, of course, is will we actually see a concession speech? Or will the race be too close to call or contested? We don't know, that's for sure, but we know we'll be covering it for you. All night long, and voters are also deciding several statewide issues tonight. That goes for Missouri as well as Arkansas in Missouri. Two ballot measures are proposing an increase for the tobacco tax. Amendment 3 would raise taxes from 17 cents up to 60 cents over the next four years. Revenue there going toward early childhood. Proposition A aims to raise cigarette taxes to 23 cents by 2021. Revenue going toward highway projects. If both are approved, the one with greater support would then go in into effect. Another big decision for voters in Missouri, Amendment 4, it would ban state and local taxes on services that are not already being taxed. We're talking daycare to tutoring, haircuts to home construction, as well as health care services. Also for Missouri, Amendment 6, this is the voter ID issue on your ballot. A vote yes would require Missouri voters to have a government-issued photo ID to vote. Turning to Arkansas now, issue six, definitely a hot one there. A yes vote on six would legalize medical marijuana in Arkansas. Voters narrowly defeated a very similar proposal there in Arkansas four years ago. Medical marijuana is legal in about half of the U.S. Of course, you can follow the election results online right here at KY3.com. We'll have updates there uh, here at KY3 starting at 7, uh, yeah, 7 o'clock tonight. And you can also see local results at the bottom of your screen throughout NBC's election coverage, then reaction from winners and losers, concession speeches and uh, victory speeches all tonight on KY3 News at 10. I was concerned that the rain could affect voter turnout or bad weather, but it really doesn't seem like it has this year. And the big story now, the cold that's about to set in. Meteorologist Abby Dyer is tracking that in our first forecast. Abby. Yeah, definitely jacket weather on this election day. Temperatures in the low 60s and upper 50s most of the afternoon. That's still where we're sitting. Notice, though, that it's still cloudy across many of our counties. Starting to see that clearing line come through, though, as the high pressure builds in for the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures are going to start falling pretty fast, too. We're still in the upper 50s, low 60s. It's 59 right now in Springfield, still 60 in Lamar, but with the sunset being just after 5 o'clock, we're going to start watching those numbers go down pretty quickly. Notice that we'll still be close to 60 at 5 o'clock if you're heading to the polls after work. By 6 p.m., temperatures falling into the 50s for most of us. We'll be in the mid-50s by the time the polls close at 7 o'clock, and if you're still in line, well, temps are going to be kind of cool. Jacket weather tonight, I'll be back in just a few minutes. We're going to talk about the first potential frost for many of you. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Still ahead here at 5, major expansion for a local restaurant group. New locations recently acquired by the Hamra family. Plus, changes coming for the site of a deadly massacre in Orlando. We'll tell you what the city plans to do with that nightclub property. Number one in the Ozarks. You're watching KY3 News at 5. With Ethan Forex, Emily Wood, and Storm Team meteorologist Abby Dyer. The place to be. On air, online, on the go.
We continue our Decision 2016 coverage now, and you are looking live at a very busy polling place in Greene County, one of 75 in the county. Record turnout expected on this election day. That line winds all through that school there. And experts are talking about the possibility in uh, this area of up to 70% of registered voters actually casting a ballot today, which is unheard of. And it's nice to see lots of families there showing up to, to vote today. Uh, the Greene County Clerk says as of the last hour, turnout is at 48% of registered voters. And just now, people are starting to get out of work and uh, head to their polling places on the way home. Uh, polls close at 7 o'clock tonight in Missouri, 7.30 down in Arkansas. You must be in line by that time if you want to cast your ballot. But if you are already in the established line by that time, when the polls close, you won't be turned away. Know that. Other news tonight, a Springfield-based restaurant group is growing. Now, Hamra Enterprises acquiring another 25 Wendy's restaurants, many of them in the Chicago area. Sam Hamra opened his first Wendy's restaurant in Springfield 40 years ago. The operation remains a family company today with his son now at the helm. The group now includes 90 Wendy's restaurants as well as several Panera Bread Company and Noodles and Company locations across the country. City of Orlando has negotiated a deal to buy Pulse nightclub for two and a quarter million dollars. The city says it will turn it into a permanent memorial for the 49 people killed on June 12th by a 29-year-old Islamic terrorist claiming allegiance to ISIS. Orlando City Council must still sign off on that deal and will consider it uh, next week. We'll keep you posted there. Back in the Ozarks, a cool and damp evening. If you're going out to vote before the polls close in the next couple of hours, take a jacket along and get ready for a line, right? Also, get ready for temperatures in the 30s because they are on the way. Not like that, but it is that time of year. Yeah. All right, here's our weather school question on your election day. True or false this time, weather can affect behavior in children. And now, your KY3 Storm Team forecast. Welcome back, everyone. It is 520 on Election Day. Check out the 5 o'clock temperatures. We are generally in the upper 50s and low 60s. So if you're heading out to the polls right now, it's still light jacket weather. But these numbers are going to be falling fast just after sunset. By 6 o'clock, we'll already see most folks in the 50s. And it will be dark at that time. If you have to stand outside, make sure you grab the jacket along with you. Even at 7 o'clock, I think we're falling to the mid-50s. And we don't stop there. I have even cooler weather in the 7-day forecast. Notice the temperatures across the board generally in the uh, 50s, but we have a couple 60s left. It's 60 right now in Lamar and in Joplin. It's 57 right now in Branson. Temperatures overall pretty cool for the day. Noticing satellite and radar. Watch that we've had some cloud cover in the forecast so far today, but a cold front moving through and high pressure bringing in much cooler, drier air behind this is going to allow the skies to clear. Most of you, though, won't see the sunshine. It's sure trying to come out here in Springfield. This is the picture out our tower cam here in town. Notice you can see that clearing on the horizon. It's a busy evening evening with election day 57 the current temperature over in Branson but it's 59 here in Springfield the forecast for tonight it's going to be kind of cool I think we'll be back into the upper 30s in our northern counties if you're in northern Arkansas you'll likely still be in the mid 40s for your overnight lows not a big threat for frost overnight tonight but that changes in the seven day forecast tomorrow temperatures recover nicely I think we still make it into the lower 60s tomorrow and sunshine will be out there in full force a north breeze is in the forecast tomorrow so it will definitely be cool you need the coat as you head out the door tomorrow morning the seven day forecast though looks pretty nice temperatures are going to be in the 60s almost every single day which is seasonal for this time of the year I have a lot of sunshine in the forecast and notice that this seven Day is dry. I don't have any rain showers moving our direction in the next several days. I know a lot of you kind of want the rain at this point, but the next week looks pretty nice and seasonal as far as temperatures are concerned with a couple cold mornings. Now to look at the weather school question for the day. This one, true or false? Weather can affect behavior in children. Hmm. Teachers all, know that's true. We're they're all true. screaming at their yeah. TVs. Parents, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that's <laughs> true. And Ron and I were just talking back in the weather office. He goes, it can affect behavior in adults, too. That is true. Sure can. <laughs> Very good point. Move to Alaska and see what happens. <laughs> Thanks, Abby. Still had five-lane roads swallowed up by a massive sinkhole. Yeah, what well, may have caused that thing? We talk about a sinkhole. Take a look at this one in Japan. Yeah, the video that you're about to see captured the moment that oh. sinkhole swallowed a five-lane road in the city. Nearby buildings had to be evacuated, of course, as a safety precaution. Wow. No injuries reported. That's the good part. But here's how big it was. 88 feet wide, 98 feet long, 
and almost 50 feet down is how far it went. Local authorities believe it was caused by construction on a nearby highway. And we want to show you wildfires still raging in North Carolina. This is a shot, actually, what it looks like from outer space. A sensor flying aboard a NASA spacecraft captured the image. Wildfires are burning at several locations in the mountains of the western part of that state. Drought has been blamed for the fires. We're back after this with a little more Election Day coverage for you. We continue our Decision 2016 coverage now, and long lines continuing at many polling places across the Ozarks. Yeah. There's one, Macedonia Baptist Church in Springfield. Polls close at 7 o'clock tonight in Missouri. 7.30 for Arkansas. Remember, you have to be in line by that time to cast your ballot. If you are in line, you won't be turned away, so you still have time to vote. Thanks for watching KY3 News at 5. It's going to be a busy night. Get all your latest election results at KY3.com. We'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock. Make it a good night.